what Martin did annoyingly at first and more intentionally later and what the dragon coached, um, albeit in a very reluctant manner, was the idea of recursion, the idea of solving a problem by using the solution to a simpler case of the same problem. So for the first story we read, um, the dragon didn't scan through the whole list because that would be way too much work. The dragon simply stated if the first element in the list was odd or not. The first number was odd or not. Um, and in the second case, the dragon didn't give him the answer to five factorial. Rather, the dragon just said that the answer to five factorial was five times the answer to four factorial. Okay. Um, and then finally, with the loaf of bread, the dragon didn't try to count all the slices in his loaf of bread. Rather, he just um, sliced off one slice um, and then knew he just needed to add one to the number of slices that the dragon he dreamt about had. Um, so there's this idea of a simpler case of the same, the same problem. And, and part of what helps us with this thinking recursively and this recursive mindset is we need to be like the dragon. We need to be like really lazy and be like, I don't want to solve that whole problem. That's too much work. I want to take a small step towards a solution and let someone, I find it helpful to think of, and someone else solves the rest of it, right? Um, I don't need to solve five factorial. Someone else can solve four factorial, and I'll just multiply that answer by five, okay? Here's a couple things that all recursive algorithms need, and the three examples we just read about have them as well. You have to have a terminating case. Now, this is true of all algorithms, not just recursive algorithms. If you think back to last semester, we said all algorithms need to finish. We had the example with like a recipe for um, baking chocolate chip cookies. If you never actually get the chocolate chip cookies, it's not a very good recipe. Um, so we have to have a terminating case, whether that's an empty list, um, whether that's the definition that zero factorial is one, um, or whether that's an empty loaf with no slices in it, whatever it happens to be. In addition, the other requirement is that these recursive calls that we're going to be making have to actually simplify the problem in some way. If we're not working our way towards a solution, um, then our algorithm isn't going to end. So these are the two requirements that we have to have. One thing I want to be upfront with, because very often when we learn a new concept or a new skill or a new tool, we want to use it everywhere. Um, we never need to use recursion. Okay? Um, we never solve a problem recursively because we have to. You can always solve problems iteratively or mathematically. In fact, our recursive solution may actually be a little bit slower than a more traditional solution. The reason why we choose to solve problems recursively is because once we are comfortable with thinking recursively, and once we have this recursive mindset like the dragon, um, it may be easier for us to conceptualize how to solve the problem recursively, um, and certainly be easier for us to code. That's why we solve them recursively. So let's take a look at this together. Um, I'm gonna open up my Blue, oh, I do have my BlueJ project open. You should have your BlueJ project open. We're gonna write one method together today. And a little bit of a disclaimer up front. I always struggle at the beginning of this unit because I want us to do a very, very simple example of recursion together. But very simple examples of recursion aren't necessarily really good fits conceptually for recursion. So this example we're about to do is gonna have all the key elements. Um, I think it's, it's, it, it's a good place to start, but if you go through this and you're like, I don't think this is naturally recursive, I don't think so either, um, but we will find more naturally recursive algorithms once we get a little bit more comfortable with the idea of writing a recursive method. So let's make a new class and we're gonna call it string reverse. And you can spell that right. And you can update your name and the date if you want. And we're just going to add a single static method. Oops.
we'll say public static string reverse. Give me one second to fix this. Leftover from last class period. All right, public static string. Um, so we'll call the method reverse. We'll make it static so we can call it from the BlueJ project. It'll take one parameter of type string, which we'll name str. So if I type in the string, or if I specify as a parameter the string hello, H-E-L-L-O, it should return the string O-L-L-E-H. That's what we're going for. We're gonna approach this, however, with the recursive mindset. We're gonna be like the lazy dragon, who says reversing an entire string is entirely too much work. Rather, we're going to do uh, just a, a small step. But before we get to that, personally, I like to make sure that we always first code um, the terminating condition. So remember, a recursive method must have a terminating case or condition. Um, think of the terminating case as the simplest problem to solve. Okay, that's what's going to be our, our terminating case. So what is the simplest string to reverse? A single character is pretty easy because it'd be the same character. I think an empty string is even easier still because an empty, what could be easier than an empty string to reverse? You don't have to do anything. You just return the empty string. So let's write a single character would totally work, um, but let's do it as the empty string. If the string equals the empty string, we simply return it. We're done. Easy problem to solve. That's our terminating condense. This could also be like um, an empty list. The definition that zero factorial equals one or uh, an empty loaf of bread. You, you certainly could. Yeah. You're going to save yourself like one recursive call, so it doesn't really matter, but yeah, you could. All right, now we got to put on the perspective of the lazy dragon. Um, we want to simply take a small step towards a solution. And when I'm thinking about this, for me personally at least, I find it helpful to like role play it and pretend that other people are helping me solve the problem and that helps me devise the recursive algorithm. So if I'm saying, okay, I'm a lazy dragon, reversing a string in its entirety is way too much work. What is one small step I could take and then I could pass along a simpler problem for someone else to solve? And so one thing I could do is I could just grab the first character in the string, have someone else reverse the rest of the string, I don't care how they do it, but as long as when it comes back, it's reversed, I can then take that first character and put it at the end of the string, right? That's not too much work. So let's write a couple lines of code to do that. Let's grab the first character in the string by calling the substring method on the string variable. Starting at index zero, going up to but not including index one. Let's have a variable that represents the rest of the string starting at index one and going through the end of the string. And so now we're gonna do this thing, which when I'm role playing in my head, I think about like, now I'm gonna hand off the simpler problem for someone else to solve. And when it comes time to write code, what that translates into is what we call the recursive call. The actual, we're going to recurse. We are gonna call this method, the one we're in right now, the reverse method, we're gonna call this method with a simpler problem. This method reversed returns a reference to a string. So we need to make sure we capture what is called. We're asking someone else to solve a simpler problem. We better keep track of the answer they give us. 
Um, so I'm going to call this local variable rest of string reversed. And that is what's going to be returned by calling the reverse method and passing it the simpler problem, namely the rest of the string. Forgetting to assign the return value of the recursive call is a really common pitfall that, that trips us up. Okay, so connected back to the example when we were like acting out calling methods last semester. Remember, if you ask someone to do something, I'm asking you to reverse the string. It would be rude for me not to listen to your answer and remember it, right? I don't want to just walk away. So it's very important I assign the return value to a variable because I need that to do the rest of my small step. Once the rest of the string comes back reversed, I can then build the entire string reversed by taking the rest of the string reversed and concatenating to the end the first character. And I just return that. This might seem unsettling, but sometimes when coding a recursive method, you might not be quite sure if it's going to work. Um, and that's, that's okay. Uh, and here's, here's like my advice for that. You might not really yet appreciate like why passing off, how this passing off the simpler problem is actually going to get reversed. Just trust that it is. Okay. Just be like, I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to trust that if I pass in E L L O, it's going to come back O L L E. And then I'm just going to do my little step and just run with it. Give it a shot. Okay. Um, sometimes that's like the leap of faith you need to make when you're writing your recursive call. So this has all the elements of a recursive method. We have a terminating case. Our small step that we take is actually a little bit complicated. We have a little bit we have to do first. We got to grab that first character. And then we have, here's the simpler problem that someone else is going to solve. Namely, we're going to call the method recursively. And when that answer comes back, we're going to do something with it to get the answer we're looking for. This is the equivalent of adding one to the number of slices of bread that's returned from the dragon when it wakes up. If you're looking at this code and you're like, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. So you're right. I don't think it's a great fit recursively. And if you're looking at this code and you're like, I don't even know if that's going to work. I think that's also hard to see. So let's step through it in the debugger. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here. I'm going to switch to the BlueJ project and actually run this thing. And I'm going to type in the string hello. And I'll adjust my window so we can see everything. Um, because I think until you step through a recursive method in the debugger, you don't really appreciate how recursion works. So let's go through this line by line, and I'll stop and point out certain important elements. All right, if the string equals the empty string, it does not. We're starting with the string hello. All right, so we're going to grab the first character. It's an H. We're going to get the rest of the string. It's E-L-L-O. No problem. That's pretty straightforward. Now we're going to do something strange. We're in the reverse method, and we're going to call the reverse method. But we are passing along a simpler problem. We started with the string hello. We're recursively calling it with the string E-L-L-O. It's got one less character. So when I hit step into, I'm now back up at the top of the reverse method. But the string is now different. The string is now E-L-L-O. It's not the empty string. I can grab the first character, which is an E. I can grab the rest of the string, which is L-L-O. And I can call the reverse method again. And I can step into that. And now I jump back up here again. But the string is different. And I can step through this, and I have the first character is the L, and the rest of the string is LO. What I want to highlight here is something we haven't really looked at before in the BlueJ debugger, and that's this right here. It's called the call sequence, and in computer science, we usually call, refer to it as the call stack. Um, this is what the dragon was alluding to when he said, I, I had gathered up a, a pretty big stack of dreams. He was making a connection to a call stack. 
Notice that reverse is in here three times. We've called the reverse method now three times. Each call has its own unique set of local variables. So the first call, the local vari the string was hello and the first character was H. The second call, different string, different first character. The third call, different string, different first character. And in fact, the fact and in fact, the, that we have different local variables for each of these is a critical part that makes recursion work. If we were to instead try to use an instance variable to keep track of this information, it would not work at all. Because the whole point of an instance variable is that all methods share the same value for that variable. We actually need all methods to have different values for the same variable. So local variables are essential for recursive functions. And what that function returns, as we're going to see in a moment, is also essential. So let's keep stepping through. Um, the first string is now an L. The rest of the string is just the letter O. We call the recursive function. The first string is an O. Hey, the rest of the string is the empty string. We call the recursive function. Now the string actually equals the empty string, and we're about to return for the first time. So we've piled up a stack of one, two, three, four, five, six calls to reverse. And now we're going to start um, working our way back up like the dragon recommended to Martin with the factorial problem. Sometimes this is called unwinding the call stack. Um, like we're working, we're, we're, we're popping each of these calls off as they return, working our way back to the final solution. So when we return from this call, we're going to return back to this invocation of reverse right on this highlighted green line. So if I hit step, sure enough, now we're back on this highlighted green line. There's one less call to reverse here. We're about to assign the return value to rest of string reversed, which is, if I make it a little wider, the empty string, to which we will concatenate the first character at the end. There it is, the O. And now we're going to return that string. And when I return that string, you'll see there'll be one less call to reverse. And now we're at this line of code where we're returning from calling reverse. We assign it to the variable rest of string reverse. There's the O. The first character is the L. We'll tack the L on the end. Sure enough, OL. And we'll return that string. And we'll keep unwinding our call stack as we go, putting that first character at the end of the string until eventually we are back in our original call to reverse. The rest of the string reversed is O-L-L-E. We're going to take the H, concatenate the H on the end of the string to end up with O-L-L-E-H, and that's what we're going to return. So it, it certainly does work, and it highlights a lot of aspects of recursion, even if, for now at least, it seems a little awkward. Um, again, I just want to really contrast, though, that we don't have to do things recursively. So let's just write a very, let's, let's pretend at the start of class today I said, hey, warm-up activity, write a static method that reverses a string. You all would probably write something like this. Public static string reverse... Uh, let's call it reverse iter for like an iterative approach. And you might have made a local variable where you keep track of the reverse string. Yeah, we're going to like not do it recursively now. Just to, just to do a, like a contrast. You would probably write a for loop to go th to index through each and every character in the string. So for int i equals zero i is less than string dot length, i plus plus. And there's a lot of different ways you could do this, but maybe your approach would be, well, I'm going to iterate through each character, and I'm going to put that character, I'm going to go from the beginning to the end, so I'm always going to take the character and put it at the start of the new string. So I'm going to say string reversed equals the character at index i, concatenated with the rest of the string reversed. 
So the last character I look at will be the final character in the string. I'll grab it and I'll put it at the beginning of the string. That sounds good. And I'll return that. I think many of you would write something probably similar to that. I don't think you would approach it recursively because I don't think that's the natural way. Um, this is relatively straightforward, uh, certainly more concise. It's going to be faster. Um, so in this particular case, I think using a for loop is probably the best approach for reversing a string. Um, but I wanted to show you how we can also do it recursively so we can start to get comfortable with this idea of having a terminating case, making a small step, making the recursive call. 